Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're creating a Django and React application with login and authentication capabilities. This is the first video in this series and the reason that I started this is I saw some of your comments that stated that you would like me to focus on login and authentication using Django and React. Now in this first video we're going to focus on creating our Django backend. And to set that up, we're going to be following seven steps. We're going to start by creating a separate folder in our backend and creating a virtual environment for our backend project. Next, we're going to be installing some packages, whereafter we're going to create our Django project and a Django app inside of that project. We're going to make some small changes to our settings.py file, and we're going to be including the URLs from our Django app inside of our Django project. And as the last step, we're going to be migrating our database and starting the server to see whether everything has been set up correctly. So let's get started. And on my computer, I've created a new folder called Django React Auth. And I'm going to right click that folder and open it with Visual Studio Code. And that will open my code editor. And the first thing that I'm going to do in this biggest folder is create a subfolder called backend because I want to create all of the resources for my backend in this backend folder to split it from the stuff that we will be doing in our front end. Okay, the next thing that we will do is create a terminal. And in this terminal, I'm going to CD into our backend because everything that we want to do for our backend should happen from that particular folder. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is create a virtual environment. And to create virtual environments, you need a package called virtual env. So I will put a link to this package in the description. And what we can do is take over this command, go to back to our terminal. And we're going to do python m and then pip install virtual env. And this is going to make sure that the package is installed on our computer and that we can create virtual environments. And as you can see, I already had that installed. So for me, it is completely fine. Next, we're going to be creating our virtual environment. And we can do that with the command python m vnv vnv. And this is going to create a virtual environment called venv. And you can already see in our backend folder that a new folder is created called venv. And inside of this folder, all of the packages that we are using will be stored. And this is very convenient because let's say that in my previous project, I've used a different version of Django. We can install an even newer version of Django inside of this project. And that means that you can use different versions of different software packages in different projects. And that's very convenient. So our virtual environment has now been created, but we also need to activate it to make sure that all of the actions that we do are also inside of that environment. And to do that, we can do venv slash scripts slash activate and this will activate the environment and you can see that it is working by seeing the ven part before the folder path where we are developing so if you see that in the front then you know it has worked successfully and that is the first step done in the next step we're going to install some additional packages that we will need to set up our django backend and the first package that we need to install is, of course, Django, because otherwise we cannot create a Django application. Uh, and in the documentation of Django, it states that you can do that very simple by doing python m pip install Django. So that is exactly what we will do in our backend. So make sure that you are in your backend folder and that your virtual environment is on. And then we're going to do python m pip install Django with a capital. The next package that we're going to install is Django REST Framework. And we're going to use Django REST Framework to create APIs that allow the communication between our Django backend and our React.js frontend. And if you scroll down in the documentation, you can see that the REST Framework allows Python 3.6 all the way to 3.11 and Django 3.0 all the way to 4.2. And to install REST Framework, we can simply do pip install Django REST Framework. So back in our code, and we're going to do the same thing as before, python dash m, and then pip install Django REST Framework. And we'll give it some time to complete. And our installs are now complete. 
Now it is time to create our Django project. And we're going to do that by specifying Django-admin start project and then the name of your project. And in my case, it's going to be off because this is going to be about login and authentication. So I'm going to start my project called off right now. And this has created a new folder in our backend folder called off. Within that, we also have off, and that is going to have all of the different files that we need. Now, actually, I'm going to shuffle around this a little bit. So you have to bear with me because I don't like this <laughs> current setup. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take manage that by, and I'm going to drag that to our backend folder. So manage that by is now in our backend folder. And the second thing that we're going to do is remove the nested folder of off. So I'm going to select init.py all the way to WSGI. So basically all the files in the second auth folder. And I'm going to move them into the first auth folder. And this leaves me with an empty auth folder right here, which we can delete. And now everything is in the same level. And the reason that I'm doing this is that I actually don't like working with these nested folders. For me, it doesn't really have any use. So I prefer to work like this. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new application inside of our backend folder called users, which is going to live next to the off folder. So we're going to do python manage.py start app users. And this will create a new folder called users where we can create all of the information about the users. And we're going to do that inside of the next videos. Now you can already see in my terminal that I tried to do this command before with the dash m and that doesn't work. So make sure that you just do python manage that by start app users. As the next step, we're going to make a few changes to our settings.py file. And our settings are located inside of our auth folder. And then in here, you will see the settings.py. Um, and the things that we need to add here are the things that we've just created. So the first thing that we need to list inside of our installed apps is the application that we've just created because we've created the users app, but we still need to let our Django project know that this users app exists. So I'm going to add a new line in there. I'm just going to say users. And this is going to make sure that Django knows that this users app has been added to our project. The next thing that we need to add to the installed apps is REST framework, because you can see in the Django REST framework documentation that that is required for everything to work correctly. So I'm going to go into my installed apps again, and under the static files one, I'm just going to add another entry called REST underscore framework. A comma and let's save it and this makes sure that all of the packages that we've installed and also the apps that we've added are now correctly processed by our Django application. As a next step we're going to take a look at the urls.py files. In our R folder you can see that we already have this urls.py file and let's just remove all of the text in there and save that um, and you can see that it refers to the admin path and this is a place where we can add all different kinds of urls. However uh, I probably want to create all of the URLs for our users module inside of the users folder because this is going to nicely separate everything that we're doing. So inside of the users folder, I'm going to create a new file also called urls.py. And in there, I'm just going to put exactly the same code as inside of the urls.py file from the off one. And for now, I'm just going to leave this as an empty list because we will be creating different URLs for the users later on. But when we create URLs in this urls.py file inside of our users folder, we still want to let it all come together in the URLs file from the off folder, because this folder right here is kind of our main folder that brings everything together. So to make sure that these URLs are going to appear inside of the off folder, we're gonna to go to the urls.py file over there, and we're going to add an import to the django.urls. So we already have from Django the URLs import path, but we're going to do a comma and also do include. And this is going to enable us to include URLs from different parts of our application. So we're going to type in path and then just as the path, leave an empty string. And as the second command, we're going to do include and then we do users.urls. 
and this whole thing needs to be between parentheses. So what we're doing right here is we simply uh, import all of the URLs from our users and URLs file into the URLs.py file from our auth folder. And this is going to make sure that everything comes together into one file. So our URLs have now been added successfully. And the last step that we're going to take is migrating our database and starting our server to make sure that everything works the way that we expect. So to migrate our database, we're going to do two commands in the terminal. The first one is python manage.py make migrations. And this is going to add some migration files to our backend. And of course, no changes have been detected because we have not actually created any models yet. And then as a final step, we do python manage.py migrate. And you can see that all of the default models have now been created by Django. And you will also see that inside of our backend folder, we now have a file called db.sqlite3, and this represents our database. So that is all fine now as well. And to check whether we actually see our Django application, we can do python manage.py run server. And this is going to start up our Django project and make sure that something is going to be visible inside of the browser. And you can see that it has started the development server at our local host 8000. And when we open that link, you can see that it opens and that our install worked successfully. So we are now complete. And this is actually all for this video. In this video, we successfully set up our Django backend for our login and authentication application. In the next video, we're going to continue and we're going to create our React.js application using Vite and make sure that React and Django can communicate with each other. For now, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.